This journey was nearing its end. I was a metaphorical stone's throw away. It had taken me a long time because of my ever-increasing need to explore. I remember now why my trip to Sagittarius took me so long. I was drawn increasingly towards each celestial body, wanting to uncover secrets, interesting landscapes, and mark down on my navigation computer places to visit when the Pilots' Federation began to remove sanctions on atmospheric shielding. If my journey to the heart and soul is for healing, then I must allow myself to be free of the past. Not to forget it, but not to be commanded by it. I had reached my destination and was surprised to see while I looked over my navigation computer that I was not alone out here in my search for peace. My old wingman from the war, Holiday, he was out here too. He flew an Imperial Clipper nicknamed Mistress, a pilot fierce in combat and a little bit out of control. He had a clear onion head addiction. He always had a bit of a jitter. He called it a habit, but these things were rarely just habits. He dropped a beacon and we converged deep within the Sol Nebula, a cold rock bathed in deep red. We talked over radio. It was comforting to hear his voice. It was different, calm, mellow, not drawn out and still somehow frantic like before. He explained he had come here to rid his supplies and go cold turkey, which is quite a difficult task, I hear. I, on the other hand, was here because I needed to accept my guilt, not for those that I had killed so much so as for the life I felt was given up such that I might live. An ex-imperial slave turned pilot named Seema. She was an old deckhand who I had watched go from a wizard with a wrench to an amazing commander. On that day, months ago, a federal assault ship caught me off guard. I was on my own, overheating, desperately trying to charge my shields. Holiday was out of range when my power plant dropped into standby, sending most of my systems offline. The crystal from my canopy burst outwards, and as the air began to rush out of my lungs, my remlock engaged. I was saved by Seema and Holiday, although Seema gave her life, turning her eagle into a 60-ton projectile. I heard a faint voice over the radio. Save yourself. I owe you this much at least. Goodbye. It was then that I saw the fast explode, nearly cut in half by the eagle. Diffusion drives causing a cascade of explosions. Debris peppered my already battered hull. Holiday fended off some more aggressors as I normally rebooted my ship and limped into supercruise. I survived, and she evidently did not. Holiday and I laid her ashes to rest and swore never to forget this person and let her become just another statistic. I must say there was an odd sense of closure, something I've not really felt for a while, and maybe this was truly my turning point in the heart and soul. Holiday and I toured the canyons, almost joyfully playing around. We stopped on the side of a uh, giant crater, which was many kilometers across, and the same deep. We leapt from the uh, jagged rocks, almost with no care for ourselves or any regard to the machinery which we drove. I think the most important lesson here is that the universe is truly a beautiful place, and despite our dark actions and dark results, we can still find healing out here, whether it's the heart and soul or any other place in the galaxy. There are truly many wonders to be found. I look out over a contact binary and we propel ourselves into a deep crater with little regard for our safety. It makes me feel just that little bit more alive. I will return to the bubble. A new man. I bid Holiday good luck with his quest to free himself of Onion Head and he disappeared into the black. We would meet again and guns would rage. <laughs>